Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC guy. Kind of excited today because we've hit another milestone for the channel. Uh, we are now, as I'm recording this, we are at about uh, 29,950 subscribers. So I suspect, I'm hoping and planning on, that we will be at 30,000 by the time you either view this video or sometime Saturday, Sunday, whatever. It's right there. So let's celebrate, but I'm not going to stop now. We're going to keep going because there's still 50,000 and 75,000 and 100,000, although not in my lifetime, I'm afraid. But let's go ahead and get started with today's project, which is building your own camera car for your model railroad. Because, you know, these things have been around for over 20 years now. They keep getting smaller and they keep getting cheaper. And now the cameras available to you uh, on places like eBay and Amazon and the like, they are so small that you can build your own for under $20. So I'm going to show you how we do that. Before we go on, I want to ask you to take a moment to subscribe to the channel. It's simple, easy, and free. All you have to do is hit that little red uh, subscribe button, and when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Thanks now. So today I want to talk about camera cars. And as I said, you know, camera cars have been around for over 20 years. They started out as fairly large things that fit into a dummy locomotive and then transmitted the picture back through the rails to a receiver somewhere and uh, to a television monitor, whatever. And those were expensive and difficult to, to work with. Uh, they were subject to a lot of interference from dirty track and wheels, that kind of thing. So they weren't all that great, and I kind of skipped over them at that point. And since then, we've had advances coming along with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and all kinds of other ways of communicating and wirelessly sending these signals. And at the same time, cameras have gotten smaller and smaller. And to the point that this is a 1080p mini camera. And you can find these on eBay. That's where I purchased this. Uh, I think I paid about $10 for it. And that's what a lot of these go for now. I bought it about three months ago. And this is very small. It is so small that, you know, it, it practically would fit in the end of a locomotive. And it has a wireless communication capability. It can send a picture directly to your iPhone, your Android phone, your iPad or Android pad, whatever you're using uh, to log into this with. And that's all you have to do is log in, select the address for this guy uh, in your settings, and then open up the app and you're ready to start making movies or taking stills. I will say that there's some drawbacks and we'll get into that in a minute. First, I want to show you how I went about using one of these to create a camera car for use on a model railroad. So let's go ahead with that. Okay, so right here is the completed camera car as I use it on the model railroad. And I'll give you a demonstration of how it works in a few minutes. First, let's take a look at how it's all put together. Okay, so the first thing to show you, the camera itself, it's very small. You'll note here it has an on-off button. You push that button and a little blinking blue light will start up. Uh, over here is a mode button, and this allows you to move back and forth between a direct connection to your cell phone or your iPhone, iPad or whatever, or you can actually connect this to your wireless router and through that to your computer. So there's a couple of different ways to set this up. I've never fooled with that. I just use the standard setup, which is a direct connection using the settings on my iPhone or my iPad. Over here, this is a little slot for an SD micro memory card. So theoretically, you should be able to insert a micro memory card in here and record movies or video or, or photographs directly onto that. Unfortunately, and I'll get into all of the problems with this device here, uh, unfortunately that uh, SD card does not work. 
There's a lot of things about this that don't work the way they're supposed to. But as I said, I'll get into that in a minute. At any rate, one of the neat things about this, this is the lens right here. So you can set this on your camera car and you're ready to go. And that works that easily because it's magnetic. It's got a magnet in here somewhere. So as long as you've got something steel to attach it to, it's going to connect right like that. So you don't have to worry about how you're going to mount it. Now for a more permanent mount, you could use double-sided foam tape, something like that to attach it to the uh, whatever you have on your car that you're going to be using. Now, how did I go about in, uh, making mine? Well, let's take a look at all the parts then. First, this is just a standard old Athern gondola. Uh, I've had it probably for years. I don't know. It's been around so long. Uh, but at any rate, these are readily, these are, uh, this is an old blue box Athern kit. And uh, they're still available at train shows and things of that nature. You should be able to pick these up for, you know, a few bucks. You might even be able to uh, pick them up for next to nothing at uh, yard sales, things of that nature, flea markets, whatever. But train shows, yeah, you can still get these in large amounts. I like using the gondola because you've got some sides on it here, and it's a fairly stable platform to work with. And then I've just got my KD couplers on the ends here because you're going to want to attach this to a locomotive to push it along and take the video. Okay, then what? This right here is just a little piece of steel. It's actually a leftover uh, weight from a car of some sort. Uh, I just pulled it out of my junk box and it was, you know, straight and flat. I just put a 90 degree bend in it so that it's going to sit here at the end of my gondola. Then to hold it in place because it's not stable there, again, you could either glue it in place, use double-sided foam tape to hold it in, or I took another weight, you can see this one here, out of an, uh, a different car, and I added a couple of more uh, quarter ounce weights on it, and that just sits in here and holds it, keeps it from falling out. Then, as I said, this has a magnet built into it, all you have to do is set it just like that. You can adjust it in order to get the angle you want, the view you want, and you're ready to start shooting videos. It's that quick and easy and simple. So this was about 10 bucks. This, you know, was free essentially because it's been in my uh, collection now for 20, 30 years. And the other parts came out of my junk box. So literally it cost me about $10 to make this. If you have to pick up some parts, you can pick up pieces of uh, steel uh, at your local hardware store. You can get pieces at your local uh, hobby shop. So you should be able to pull, a, pull together a piece of steel to make the support for this. And uh, some weights, things of that nature, are all very inexpensive. Double-sided foam tape would be an easy way to go about making this without having to go out and buy weights. So that's how it works. Now, let me go ahead and uh, show, talk about the problems. One issue are the instructions. They are the typical stuff you get uh, in a lot of Chinese products that have a lot of pictures and tell you basically nothing. Uh, there's enough information in here, though, if you read it carefully, to be able to get the darn thing connected to your cell phone or to your uh, tablet, computer, whatever, and then start making uh, videos. But it does require a uh, an app. I downloaded the app from the Apple uh, iPad store and uh, was able to get it up and running without any problem. After I did some fiddling around and doing a lot of close reading of these instructions. Now, there are a couple of things, as I said, that I have not tried because they are so convoluted I didn't find it worthwhile. I was able to very easily turn it on, connect to it using the settings set up on my iPad, and basically start up the app and work my way through and finally get a picture. Now, that's when the problems start. Because I tried getting this SD card memory slot to work. The SD card will not stay in there. You know, when you push an SD card in, it usually clicks into place and is held there. This one does not do that. 
I don't know how this bus is supposed to work. It's not mentioned at all in the instructions anywhere. They don't give you any idea how you transfer a file onto the SD memory card. I even tried holding the SD card in there with my finger and doing a video, and I still couldn't get it to work. So I don't think this works. Now, right here on the side is the charging port. Now you just plug this into any kind of um, USB connector type charger, and it charges up fine without any problems. So, in spite of all the problems, I was able to connect to it. I was able to get a picture or, and a video on my iPad. And once it's on your iPad or your iPhone, then you can transfer it to your desktop computer and use it there as well, if that's what you want to do. Okay, so that's the that's the uh, the way this works, and I'll I'll go through the setup in just a minute. One issue of, of this is it is supposed to be a 1080p video. However, I cannot get anything greater than a 720p video out of it, and that's with the 1080p selected on the uh, uh, in the iPad or, or in the app uh, that comes with it. So I have not been able. I've tried it various ways, and the greatest resolution I can get out of this is 720p. I can't get 1080 out of it. So that's another limitation. Also, this particular device only records at 10 frames per second. So it's a pretty low resolution image or movie that you get out of this. Uh, I noted in the current releases of these mini cameras that are available on eBay that they say that they record at um, something on the order of 30 frames per second, and there are some versions that supposedly will give you 4K videos out of this. Hopefully, those will work. So what I'm trying to tell you with this is, be careful what you buy. Be aware that you might not get the resolution that they advertise on uh, eBay. You might not get the frame rate that they advertise. Be aware of all that. Okay, so now you know how the uh, camera works and how it all fits together in the car here. Let's go ahead and I'm going to set this up in Charlottesville Yard with a switcher to push it. And we'll do a run through Charlottesville and on out into the Red Hill area here on my layout. Um, after that, I will go ahead and step you through how the Little Stars app works and show you what's involved in actually taking a movie uh, and transferring it to the iPad or to your iPhone or whatever device that you're using to do this recording. So let's go ahead and move over to the layout, get it set up, and then I will go ahead and run you through this. Be aware there's no sound. It'll just be the locomotive pushing the car through the track area in Charlottesville. So you'll get a look at how good of a resolution you can get with this camera, even though there are many limitations that I've pointed out. So let's go ahead and move on over. Okay, what I want to do next is kind of step you through the process of using the Little Stars app that came with the camera that I got. I can't say that it's going to be the same um, app. I'm assuming they're probably using all the same devices. I don't know. 
But uh, I'm going to show you how this one works and show you some of the limitations. And then uh, we'll go on from there. So I'm going to have to show you with stills because I haven't figured out on my iPad how to do a screen capture of a video. So I'm going to do screen captures of the stills. So the first one I'm going to show you here then is once you turn on the camera and it starts blinking that little blue light, then it will send out a, uh, an address to the Wi-Fi uh, on, your, on your iPad or iPhone or Android device. And you can see it up at the top there under Wi-Fi. Uh, that's the uh, device address that I've acquired here. So let's move on to the next one and I'll show you that. So this is the next uh, image that comes up when your device starts up. And then you basically click on that little button up at the top left that says AP. And the device, uh, the software will initialize, acquire the image, and you can start doing something. So that's, so right here is what that uh, scene looks like once the uh, camera has acquired, uh, been acquired by the uh, software, by the app. And you can see here the image uh, that is shown uh, on the scene here, or of the scene. And you can see the various little buttons down here that you can push. Some of these are described in some detail in the instructions, some aren't. So you can see it says that it's recording at 1080p. Well, I can tell you for a fact that the image I got is a 720p image at 10 frames per second. So that's the first thing that it does not, it's not correct. It does not record at 1080p. It recorded at 720p. Don't know why, don't know what they did. Okay, then there's one you can, on the right hand side there, you can go to full screen. You can, in the center, there's a flip top to bottom, flip left to right. And then along the bottom, there's the movie camera on the far bottom left. You click on that to start recording a video. You click on it again to stop recording. If you want to take a still photo, you can click on the camera on the the next one. Then the next two have to do with the lighting and that's described in the instructions. Okay, so at that point I did the recording that I'll show you, uh, that I showed you and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, once you're done and you've recorded your video then you can click back. So that'll take you back uh, to this screen here once you're done recording and click on this little movie reel down on the lower right. And that will take you to the movies, a listing of the movies that are recorded and are present on the device. So let's take a look at that. And you can see here up at the top is the one that I recorded the latest and showed you in the video. So that was recorded on the 21st of July. It's one video. If you click on that, it will bring up the following image. Okay, so you can see the beginning of the video starting to play out. Right at the top, there is a little image of an iPhone or a cell phone with a little blue arrow. If you click on that, that will save this movie file to your iPad, your iPhone, whatever device you're using this on. And then once it's saved on there, you can go to your list of videos, play it back, you can transfer it to your computer and go on from there. So that's basically all there is to this device. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. Hopefully you'll be able to make your own camera car for use on your model railroad so you can capture the look of cab rides uh, for your viewing pleasure or for your family, or for your YouTube channel, whatever you want to do with it. But be aware that there are those drawbacks that I told you about. So be very careful when you select the mini camera uh, that you're going to purchase and use for this. So that's it for today. Hopefully next week we will take a look at making the connection of that helix to the ends of the layout that I previously showed you. So. Until then, I'm going to be laying a little bit more track, doing some more wiring, getting everything ready for those final connections. In the meantime, have a great week, and we'll see you here next week with another video from the DCC Guide. Bye now.